Rick Hirsch, writer and um, editor of uh, Corona Books, uh, here to talk about several things, mainly this book that we published by Deben Rai uh, called Supriya at 50. Uh, we've published in the past uh, his Fatland a book that takes place in India and this one you know although we use a European painter to create the uh, bubbling baby effect uh, Rubens and uh, then we used both uh, modern and classical Indian painting to produce this Indian looking book now, uh, what I, I wanted to start with was something really clever, and it really was, but I forgot what it was. But what it has to do with um, my uh, astonishment at the uh, lack of uh, allure that India has devolved um, <laughs> it has devolved a lack of allure now uh, when I was a kid um, it, it all it needed was jungles monkeys and lizards and snakes and you know that kind of thing to be uh, alluring and so it might as well have been the Philippines and sometimes it was or the Amazon and sometimes it was, but as um, I grew older and learned more about India, had Indian food, uh, listened to Indian classical music, um, read Indian uh, philosophy, read Indian novels, Indian short stories, um, eventually uh, became uh, very deeply involved in India, I've now been there seven times, um, I find it to be the most fascinating uh, place on earth that I've ever been to. And uh, had my writing career been, you know, a little bit more lucrative, not lucrative, but a little bit more than, you know, had I made, say, 20 grand a year if I just kept writing, I would have moved to South India. And um, um, this by no means is to say that India is, is superior to other places, although it is <laughs> um, in many regards. Uh, what it all that's wrong now. I remember, I remember one time um, uh, an Indian woman said to me once that she was really sick of people who visited India uh, returning and um, uh, complaining about how dirty it is. Um, <laughs> this was an Indian woman who did not criticize people very much. It took a lot to irritate her, uh, but she found that irritating. Um, I think, you know, it, it, the, the great story of India is the tragedy of um, the rise of European um, technological force and, and commodification um, so that um, the most powerful um, economy in the world at the time of Columbus, um, although he, di he didn't go to India, um, I don't know if he ever found out but he, he, he uh, um, his his time you know, around the the turn of that uh, their 16th century, um, 
India was the wealthiest country in the world, very sophisticated as well. Um, its poetry, its its um, epics, and the the extraordinary subtlety of its um, uh, philosophical debates and and and, and rectifications and, and uh, variants and so on. Um, so it's probably impossible to truly understand Hindu philosophy um, because it's more than one entity and, and also there are several branches and the um, I think without learning um, perfectly in Indian language you can't really understand the place um, am I getting anywhere with this because this is actually just a review of a book of short stories. But what I want to get across is that this fascinating place, um, which still produces beautiful textiles and, 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 and still has a culture that's evident in its uh, poverty, dirty place, dirty place. Um, yeah, well, you know, um, it was... Um, made into a cesspool by the British and um, at a time when you could not count on an economy revivifying itself, you know, under uh, unfavorable terms of competition with the rule-making West. Um, and so, uh, well, Anyway, that that's that's a part of it. I, I, what I'm what I'm um, curious about is we have now uh, at Corona Sums that we have five books that have to do with India. I wrote three, and uh, and then we have uh, Deben Rai, who is Indian, and. Um, we have a lot of books that don't sell well. Um, every press does. And uh, the difference, this is a little point in the favor of our press. The thing is, we, we don't take the books out of print. Because, you know, maybe, maybe um, you know, uh, Idjit in Chief um, loves Fatland. And maybe his energy will, you know, lead to... Uh, a run on these books or maybe it'll be bought by a bigger press and uh, or maybe he'll win a prize or you know a, a, or maybe it's just a good practice to keep books in print that's my real thought on that so um, I'm not complaining I'm 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 just I'm mystified at the um, uh, the lack of allure, the devolution of allure of India, um, and the lack of interest in in the uh, Indian books. But you know I, I I need to talk about this one. And I, I'm such a poor reviewer. And then when it's a book of short stories, um, well, so what I did is I wrote on Goodreads. I wrote a review. And uh, I said, I'm on a reviewing roll. So I think it's a good idea to begin this one now. I won't end it now. I will soon stop for I want to do the book justice. And currently, my mind is bogged by an oddity. The author is one of the funniest people I know in writing, in writing emails. At Cronus Amstadt, we published his novel Fatland, in part because his wit was more evident in that book than in his other books. For instance, little is funny in this collection of stories, which are finally wrought to the effect that subtlety not only matters, but is both longed for and appreciated. I will end tonight's entry just by saying that as these are stories of people in transit or having 
transited often intellectuals they're often meditations on the natural result of that circumstance a particular existential condition a particular particular not only because of the estrangement from such a strong durable old culture as indian but also because of the inevitable subversion of the motivation the lure of money in a faraway land that to expose a general generality I harbor tends to work best for indelicate souls. Roy writes about writes better about delicate souls and to the effect that of all that I have read about being other whether black woman Indian in the US etc I feel most the effect in the prose of Dave and Roy. I read all of the stories in this book more than once with the exception of the last two and I will be adding to this review as I revisit the stories. The full gamut of stars, I gave it five stars, indicates my deep attachment to a few of these stories. If I find they are suddenly unable to penetrate the mature mind of me, or denatured, demented mind of me, um, I will adjust those stars accordingly, prepare for further reviewing, in this very spot. And then, <clears throat> the other night, I was on a writing roll. Um, I was writing uh, in, in a current novel. Um, and uh, at about 3.30 in the morning, I thought, you know, I'm, re I'm ready. I just reread most of the stories in this book. And uh, um, I sat down and I, I just, I wrote a long extension of that which fortunately for you you're not going to have to listen to because i came to start this youtube and saw that it was missing um i didn't hit edit to start i don't know how i started but i, I started adding to it and then it disappeared because i didn't properly do what i was supposed to do so um, then I, at this time, I thought, well, shit, you know, it's, it, 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 there's nothing like um, uh, trying to um, repeat what you were going to write. And, um, you know, there were some good lines, there was some wit, there was some, you know, but mostly there was a pretty good summation of several of the stories. And... I just quickly um, wrote this, okay? Sorry, but, you know, I, I am going to read a little bit. Whoops. That's a good start. When it's necessary. An extensive review and lost it. I wrote an extensive review and lost it because I did not hit edit first. No way to reproduce it, but suffice to say that I expanded by discussing several stories in detail, beginning with first meeting which is in here, um, uh, in which the tradition of families approving arranging marriages is skewed by the fact that the son of a Bengali couple has chosen someone in the U.S., though an Indian, not Bengali, but Sikh. The family of the woman lives in the U.S. as well, and the story is told through the view of the Bengali mother. The power of tradition, the endurance of tradition, is shown for its force and inelasticity at the same time. Um, it's a paradox. The criticisms of the woman who has come to be introduced to the parents of her future husband are initially petty, you know, the way she's sitting. You know, can you believe the way she's sitting in that pink sari, you know? Uh, the criticisms of the woman who has come to be introduced to the parents of her future... Oh, initially petty, okay. But as the meeting goes from dinner to postprandial, more is revealed, and it turns out that the forces beneath the simple service surface are quite volcanic, which is what I was getting at in the first paragraph. Um, it's a very powerful story. And um, one thing that I like about Dave and Rai is that um, 
he, unlike uh, most authors from India that I've read in English, he uh, does not cater all that much to the reader unfamiliar with India. And I don't think that that's uh, uh, at all a reason to not read the book. Um, although it will put some people off, you know, I'm saying, you know, he's not going to give you all the information you need to understand. Um, if you don't know anything about India, probably you shouldn't buy the book. But actually you should because you can read it and then say, huh, what? I don't understand. Why is that a problem? And, and then you'll understand more about India and, and you'll learn more and you'll learn more deeply. Um, but he doesn't uh, cater so that you, you might not understand the same, you know, why is that such a powerful thing? Why, you know? Uh, but I think that if you do, um, you'll be, if you, if you even glimpse it, maybe if you don't even understand it, just the, the force of a gesture, um, ba basically, you know, th this is going on throughout his writings. There's this, this surface I mentioned that seems tranquil enough and underneath there's a violence. And I think that, that the, um, Indian in the United States, you know, that, that, that scenario that gives rise to stories like these, um, I think that that is representative of basically all of our interactions. Um, when we're not a communal um, human aggregate, but one that pits itself against others. And in at every level, um, it's true of nationalistic, it's true of neighbors. Um, <laughs> um, it's, it's very rare, it seems to me, that we come upon um, places, um, organizations, societies, that don't have um, this this competing other problem um, that there isn't beneath the surface, and I think it may be just a, a, a characteristic of the human being to dislike the other, um, and maybe all of psychology is um, should be founded on that. Um, on investigating that and the ways that um, being um, twisted in this way lead to twisted behavior. Maybe not. <laughs> I don't know. This is my mouth. So those of you who say I'm talking out of my ass are speaking metaphorically. Anyway, uh, let me go on. Um, uh, yeah, the, the, um, that's the most powerful theme to me throughout the collection of the stories, whether they take place in the U.S. or, as in one case, the India of history. In that one, a dipshit of an administrator, um, a colonizer, um, goes to rural India and, and finds that um, though he's from a family of colonizers, administrators, um, and knows India like the back of his hand, doesn't know a fucking thing, and he realizes it um, in a, a very uh, um, funny and violent way. Um, maybe it's only funny to me because of my biases, but, um, you know, my biases are honest, strong, open. I'm a pretty fucked up guy, yeah, I'm... <laughs> I can't help that. That's good. Leave that out of this review. Edit that. Um, I'm not. I, I don't have my director here to edit this. I'm filming this myself, so I'm screwed. Anyway, um, this. It, you know, 
I like comments on my videos. And anybody who comments, that was pretty fucking boring, Rick. Um, I'll buy you a cup of coffee. <laughs> really. Here in Isla. You come, stay here free. Free vacation in Isla for anybody who says, quite honestly, Rick, you know, that was really ill-advised and dull. Worst review I've ever watched. Anyway, I'm, I'm going to try to... Nah, I'm not going to try really hard. I'll be done soon, though. I'm almost, I'm almost done with what I wrote. Anyway, uh, if I, so if I would stick to what I wrote, we'd be, we'd be fucking back home by now with our loved ones. Um, the others, our hated ones, our hate ones, our hated ones. Yeah, who do we hate more than family? <laughs> yeah, um, they know everything. And um, they know that we can't act on our feelings. Yeah. Oh, well, okay. Uh, neighbors, neighbors, okay. Uh, and who's more neighborly than family? So, uh, um, anyway, an ancient, extraordinary civilization is pitted against an upstart vulgarity, the U.S. after the British, that for all the wrong reasons carries a devastating forceful disease, almost mythic, in the combination of its allure and the inevitability of its fatal effects. Um, I think I picked that sentence up in the middle, but, you know, listen to it again. I mean, an ancient and extraordinary civilization is pitted against an upstart vulgarity, the U.S. after the British, that for all the wrong reasons carries a devastating forceful disease, almost mythic in the combination of its allure and the inevitability of its fatal effects. You know, all the, you know, all these characters that, that go to the U.S., you want to say, no, 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 don't, don't do that. Don't, don't go there. Don't go there. Um, next time I, I get a chance to talk to Dave and Roy, I'll ask him, you know, why did you go? Because he did go to the United States. And um, I'd like to, you know, know more about that. Maybe his autobiography will be the next. I would love, you know, there's a famous autobiography by uh, uh, Nizam, no, Mirad Chowdhury. Um, and uh, the autobiogra autobiography of an unknown Indian, uh, an obnoxious uh, reactionary fella, um, but, a, you know, a great writer and a uh, fat book. Um, the other side of it by um, David and Roy would be uh, a real contribution to interglobal. <laughs> interglobal um, to global literature and um, I'm going to talk to him about that someday soon maybe I'll send him this and he'll say oh god yeah you're so full of shit Rick I, I better hurry up and write something that isn't well challenge so uh yeah, the stories convey the brutality of the inequity of two others. Always there are others, always the others. Um, as well as the eternal violent royal beneath surfaces, no matter how placid. I think I've already said that. Um, am I getting repetitive in my demise? In Pujo Sunshine, the process is displayed on several levels as the partition... Um, of India is one of the diseases informing relations within the tale. That's really a, a, a complex and powerful story, uh, Pujo Sunshine. Um, sounds like it's going to be, you know, sweet. It's not. Um, although it is. Uh, I mean, a good writer will, will be able to also, um, you know, 
capture what beauty is available. Um, and so it is very beautiful. The rural Bengal, which is a very particular place I've never visited. Um, uh, I mean, I know from from films by Satyajit Ray and by uh, um, many, many authors, there's something very, very particular about rural Bengal. And the story takes place um, to some degree in, uh, for some time in a, a village in rural Bengal. It's a beautiful story and uh, painful. Um, in Pujo Sunshine, it's displayed on several levels. Okay, I said that. Partho's Home is my favorite story, I think. Maybe the longest story in the book. I, I, I don't think I have to check. It, it, I'm sure it is. It's a novel of 35 pocketbook pages that tells the simple story of a couple and their daughter, I'm reading, who do not visit India when they normally would. And that's the extent of the surface of the story. It's delivered in a profound simplicity, reflective of the author's selection of detail and subtextual moments exploited. So, uh, I, I would say, you know, to any, any friend, um, yeah, uh, uh, read Parthos Home. And uh, if you don't like it, then the book isn't for you. But I would also say, oh, get that one. Uh, there's one story in there that's worth the 10 euros on its own. That's Partho's Home. Um, I know that story so well. I've read it so many times. Uh, and I, I read it again. Uh, just before writing the review that you aren't having inflicted on you. It's a really, um, it's, a, it's an amazing piece of work. You know, th this is uh, one other thing I, I, I wanted to talk about, but I, I forgot. This is a, not a, um, a postmodern writer. This is maybe to some degree an old-fashioned writer, um, probably um, overly influenced in his style by um, Victorian era novelists. I don't know. Maybe that's not true. I wonder if he would hit me if if he saw that. Probably wouldn't. He's not a violent person, but uh, it might disgust him. Anyway, but but it might also be true. The the stories are are. Uh, they make me think a great deal about my own writing career, why it's gone the way it's gone, in terms of my own stylistic uh, habits, choices. What most uh, books I read um, require for me to read them, uh, I I want, you know, I want what art gives me, you know, that 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 madness, that that sort of brilliance. I don't read a lot of straightforward literature. And uh, I guess that's, I wonder if that's what this should be called, straightforward literature. But it, it, it is not, um, um, a bag of tricks. Although actually in, in a way it is because they're just different kinds of tricks. You know, how, how you can convey in 35 pages um, a, a fat novel's worth of feeling, wisdom, emotion. I guess that's part of feeling, huh? For some of you. Uh, it used to be for me, and then the nerve endings, you know, and with all the alcohol, and, you know, um, and, and, and concussions. I've had three serious concussions since I moved here, and I'm, I'm going to ask my doctor if, if, uh, uh, that what I take for dementia, and many people say, ah, it's everybody does that. You know, you forget things. You know, it's really no different um, from 
from, you know, like opening the refrigerator and putting the cereal in so that you can put the milk where the cereal goes. You know, we do that at every age. So are things really going downhill in the old harsh noggin? I don't know. I don't know, but it might be. If, if they are, look at that. I'd give you the finger, but, you know, you probably don't want it. It's broken. Um, almost cut it off yesterday. Anyway, uh, careful with your sharp knives. I, I um, simply wanted to say that I've, had, I've been knocked cold three times since moving here uh, 21 years ago or so. Three. Three. And you can read about it in my latest novel, which uh, predicts a fourth. Um, <laughs> that's what made me think of it. Um, uh, but I wonder, you know, I, I, you know, how many concussions do, you know, does it make to, to call a football player retired? I, I, I don't know. Anyway, a lot of concussions. This is a review by a concussed human being. So go easy on me, but do mention in the comment section how bored you were on a scale of uh, uh, 9 to 11. Okay. Ah, there you are. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Anybody who listened to this, what's wrong with you? But the book, the book is much better than the presentation of it. And here we go again.